what is your viewpoint on Josh Allen? Are you going to be having a lot of shares of Josh Allen this year? Or are you telling and are you telling people, you know, you should you should take him because I think he'll return that value. Right here. Let's start with Josh Allen. All right. He was a player that, you know, right after football ended, everyone was, you know, football fatigue. We get it. But Josh Allen was was definitely sliding in fantasy drafts, right? He was not the second overall pick off the board, even though he finished as the number one overall quarterback, he was still, you know, five or six down on, as the quarterback taken. Fast forward two months, and the fantasy community is now getting aboard that, and they have risen that value all the way up to uh, QB2 off the board. Are you concerned that there could be some regression coming for from Josh Allen that maybe we saw the uh you know the extent and the in the peak of what he could potentially be because he saw you know 102 rushing attempts eight rushing touchdowns which he's never had any less than in his uh, entire career however you're seeing more and more indication that hey maybe we shouldn't let Josh or uh yeah Josh Allen take those hits what is your viewpoint on Josh Allen? Are you going to be having a lot of shares of Josh Allen this year? Or are you telling, and are you telling people, you know, you should, you should take him because I think he'll return that value. I'm one that just tends to wait on a quarterback. So a guy like Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen, they rarely ever fall to me. Right. Uh, it, if they fell, I'd, I'm snatching up Josh Allen in a heartbeat. That's not even a question. Uh, when you talk about guys that you draft in the first round uh, from a football perspective as a quarterback, the progression he's made from year one to year three is astounding, especially from where he mm -hmm. came out of Wyoming. Uh, like th that's the progression you want. You want, you know, a little rough, but good in year one, great leap in year two, and then like astronomical, almost MVP like leap in year three. And that's exactly what he did. And and the best part is they didn't bring in a single running back that is gonna like take away his goal line carries unless they want to you know rope in Zach Moss more into the offense because now it's year two maybe. But Devin Singletary is not gonna goal line carry. So really, his only competition is Zach Moss. And at that point, like it, they added Emmanuel Sanders. Like they only got better on offense. It's ridiculous. Um, their offensive line doesn't truly concern me at all and josh allen's massive like you need two people mm. to bring that guy down he's huge he's so big he, he's huge and like i, I don't like I, I think i don't want to say there's going to be immense regression i don't expect him to ball as big as he did last year because now i think teams are going to be a little more prepared for his game um like we saw mahomes in his 55 touchdown year no no one expected mahomes to ever do that again or was it 50 50 i forget exactly what he had yeah, but that it was that, 55 i we, do think i think he'll get 50 again but yeah, i don't oh, i yeah. don't know if he'll do 55 yeah that that that's just nuts right like yeah. that's that that's literally a record like that's just uh, that's unbelievable Josh Allen will probably take a slight step back, but it's not going to be noticeable. He'll make up for it in some way or in, a, in some way, shape, or form. He's now in year two with Stefan Diggs. Cole Beasley looked like the best slot receiver in the NFL with him. Uh, Gabe Davis, you're going to talk about a guy who's fast and opposite Stefan Diggs, and now he doesn't have to worry about John Brown being in front of him. Gabe Davis is going to have a great season. And then I said Emmanuel Sanders. Like they have, they have four receivers. Or I'll say three receivers. Gabe Davis is still unproven. I think a lot of people are just high on him. They have three proven receivers in this offense. Tight end lacks. Dawson Knox isn't anything special, but we've seen him. He can get the job done. He can get the job done, exactly. He's not going to be astronomical, but he's a great football tight end, just not a great fantasy mm -hmm. football asset. There's nothing stopping Josh Allen from being the QB1 again this year. Literally nothing. The 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 defenses outside of New England in this, I, I'll give Miami a little credit. Um, I don't think there's any defense that's really going to slow down this offense, especially in the division. They have two cupcake games against the Jets, so that's an easy yeah. 40 points from Josh Allen there in both of those games. Um, they're just they're set up so well this year, and I'm very angry because they had a great draft too, which yeah. is painful as a Patriots fan. They had a really good draft, um, so I. I I, I love it. And their defense is going to get people off the field fast, which then means more show time and more face time for Josh Allen. Yeah, their defense really started to click there near the end and on their playoff run. It was really interesting to see. All right, you talked about, uh, I like those takes. You talked about um, if he failed 
to you and what's the right price for you to pay uh, for Josh Allen? What round would you be saying, all right, I'd be interested in him? If I was sitting there comfortable with two running backs and two receivers, I would have no problem pulling the trigger in the fifth. Okay. Um, I am. I just. I tend to not be the person to pull the trigger in the fifth because I want depth at receiver and running back. Um, so, but if you're someone who want who wants a quarterback, I would have no problem with Josh Allen even as high as the fourth. Um, just again, his rushing upside. Like you're, it, if you're telling me he's scoring eight touchdowns a season, you're guaranteeing me what's that? Forty eight points, guaranteed. Forty eight points a year. Cool. Sign me up. Like that's perfect. And here's the other aspect of the quarterback, the the drafting the high quarterback, right? That a lot of people actually don't talk about even in our community. And that is the psychological effect that a quarterback on your roster like that has. And I say that because I did take Pat Mahomes early in a league last year because and, and several leagues actually because I thought about that. Because when you, you'll you start seeing, and we say it to our, our own audience, right? When you're going into a week-to-week -week game, you look at your opponent's roster and you start to say, okay, I think this guy can get this many points. I think he can get this many points. And you start gauging. And then you, and you can get a sense of, all right, do I need to have a high-end uh, game or yeah. do I just need to play solid players this week? And you get a sense for that. And when you have a guy like, Josh Allen or Pat Mahomes on your roster every single time guys think I need to go for that ceiling because this could be the week that Pat Mahomes or Josh Allen drops 48 and I I am instantly out of the game yep. and so it's just like another psychological effect that I think a lot of people don't really talk about in our game but it is something that is is there I know I, I love that point I mean we we talk about it on our start sit different day show that we do like we we ask you know like hey who are you playing against? How much are you down? Like, especially if there was a Thursday night game. And we tell them, look, if you're chasing, pick X player. Yeah. If you're in a solid state and you just need, like, 10 solid points, go with this player. Right here. Hey, you made it to the end of the video. If you like what you saw, go ahead and click subscribe. And if you want to watch more fantasy football content, check out one of these videos.